Good morning, everybody. I hope you're enjoying a very exciting Saturday morning uh, with your new devices. In just a moment, I'm going to show you how to turn them on and get started with all of the systems that are there to support your learning here at Stonyhurst. We like to be innovative with the technology in our beautiful old Tudor and Victorian building. Um, it's a wonderful setting uh, for this modern way of learning. Just a couple of ground rules. This laptop is there to support you. Um, you do need to take care of it. You should keep it in its bag um, whenever you can. Um, and the only times when you can't are probably when it's charging and when you're using it, and that's it. Um, the charging stations and the charger that you've been given to store either at home or in the boarding house as appropriate, um, they, you do need to remember to use them. Uh, they're very important uh, so that you can always have your device ready for your lessons. And of course, all of the normal rules about how you're allowed to use computers at Stonyhurst responsibly continue to apply. Shortly after you turn your device on, it'll ask you to select a keyboard layout, its United Kingdom that you're looking for, and then click Yes at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. You don't want to add a second keyboard layout, so click Skip. It'll ask you to connect to a network. You're looking for Stonyhurst BYOD, so click on that, then input your username and your password. The username is just your school number, and the password is your normal password, which I'm sure you know by now. Um, then you just click uh, to connect to that network, and then once it's on, click Next. You'll get quite a lot of uh, just a moment and let us just set you up kind messages, and then it'll reboot. You'll be then thrown into another blue screen, and again, you'll get lots of just a moment. This doesn't happen every time you switch on the computer. It's just this first time because it's setting your computer up from scratch with all of the Stonyhurst settings that you need to do all your work. Eventually, it will ask you for your username and password on this screen, which says, Welcome to Stonyhurst College. And again, it is your uh, school number as your username and your normal password as the password. Only you can log in to this computer. You can't lend this computer to somebody else. Um, they can't log into it and mess around with the settings. It's um, locked to your number, which is why it's got a label on it with your school number and why you have to make sure you put it in the right laptop bag because the laptop bag also has your school number and it also has your playroom on it um, so that if it ends up in the wrong place, um, it can be brought back to you. Uh, it'll then greet you with a, a happy jolly hi and it'll tell you that it's getting everything ready for you. As soon as you see this screen saying setting up your device for work, it'll have the first two icons ticked. The bottom one won't be yet, but you can just click continue anyway. And when you click continue anyway, you can start using the device, um, but it'll continue setting up in the background. So as you start perhaps browsing the web, it'll be installing Teams in the background. So first of all, I will explain to you what the different systems we have at Stonyhurst are used for. Then I'll show you how to open uh, and do very basic navigation in the most important ones. Um, so those are Teams, OneNote, your email, uh, Firefly, and Socks. Now, most people have probably already got onto Socks because I know tutors were chasing you uh, yesterday to make sure you'd got your options uh, logged there. But in case there's people who had technical difficulties, I will show you how to use that. And then at the very end of the video, I'll explain to you where it is you go if you need help with any of the systems or with the laptop itself. So first up will be Teams and OneNote. Teams is the place where all of your classes sit and OneNote is where you will keep all of your work. And those two things are very much linked together. So your class in Teams is a place where you can access your OneNote from, uh, as well as any other files that the teacher has left for your class. Uh, then we have the rest of the Office suite, um, as it's known, which is Word, Excel, PowerPoint, um, which are probably familiar to most of you, or perhaps the Mac alternatives, um, uh, Pages, Numbers, and Keynote are more familiar. We also have access to an email system, which is uh, very much used here at Stonyhurst, um, and that's done via Outlook, which is uh, an online 
uh, on the web system of accessing your emails. You need to do that at least once a day. Finding out what your studies tasks are, studies are what we call homework here, um, you will use Firefly um, to find those. And finally, uh, for signing up to extracurricular activities and signing up to things like games options, you will use Socks, uh, which will give you an overview of all of the activities which you might like to participate in and when they are and where they are and that sort of thing. So just to give you a general idea of where things are in Windows in case you're normally a Mac user or you haven't used a computer like this for a little while, um, this view is called your desktop and there are lots of icons on your desktop. Maybe there'll be a couple, maybe there'll be lots. Um, and you also have the taskbar at the bottom of the screen. Now, there may already be a link to Teams in one of those two places. I've got a, a T icon here for Teams. You may have one on the desktop. If you don't, you just click on the Start menu, which is this window icon at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Um, and this shows you all of the apps that are installed on your computer uh, and it's alphabetized but uh, for some reason Teams is called Microsoft Teams rather than uh, just Teams and if you click on that it'll load it up and it'll show you all of the Teams which you've been added to. You've automatically been added to all of your classes um, and there may be other Teams that you've been added to as well. At this stage I should say for any returning pupils who were here last year if you need access to Teams that you were in last year for your previous classes, perhaps if you're um, going into syntax and you want access to your grammar notes, that's something your teacher will discuss with you in the first lesson or two, um, and they've all been shown how to do that. So this is my uh, grammar music class, um, and so if I click on that, you can see what a, a team looks like. Uh, this posts tab, you can see at the top here, it says posts. Um, the post tab is where there might be some uh, chat or you might type a question for your teacher and your, your teacher may um, respond there. Um, ask your teacher if they're going to use this facility because it's possible that they, uh, they may prefer you to do it in a different way via a clinic or via email. Um, there's also a files tab at the top and teachers may well put, for example, the PowerPoint from the lesson uh, or perhaps some interesting additional documentation that you want to read, uh, that you may want to read in there. Um, in a second, we'll be coming on to a class notebook. Um, if you're in Teams and you quickly want to have a look at something in your notebook, you can do that um, by clicking on class notebook in Teams. It's not the best way of accessing the notebook, but if it's a very quick thing you want to look up, that's certainly um, a way of doing it. There is also the possibility uh, to hold meetings in Teams. Um, up at the top right hand corner here, you can see it says meet. Um, and if a meeting has already been started, you might get a notification that, uh, that a video meeting uh, is going to happen on a particular date. That would generally only happen if there was um, uh, somebody isolating. So if somebody in your class was required to quarantine, the uh, lesson may well take place on video. Um, it's only very limited circumstances that we would do that in um, during this academic year. Um, but there are also some quite exciting things that we can do um, with that video. So, for example, it may be that a teacher is able to get somebody to speak to the class um, who otherwise wouldn't actually travel to Stonyhurst, but is happy to give a half hour talk to your class. So there's, there's uh, times where you might need to use that uh, button uh, or join a meeting. but generally not. Once you've found the class notebook inside Teams, you do actually have um, access to all of the notes that are there. It's just not necessarily the quickest and most comfortable way uh, to get access to things, particularly if you're trying to get something that your teacher has only just um, distributed to you. It doesn't synchronize as quickly as the other versions. So it's best to use it uh, either in the browser or the desktop app. Now, at the time I'm writing this video, um, which is Tuesday evening, um, the desktop app is not working properly. That's not a Stonyhurst issue, that's just a Microsoft issue. Um, so here at the top right-hand corner, if you 
click open in browser rather than open in desktop app. It'll take you into Google Chrome and it will um, load up. So um, the folder that has your name on it, um, you can access that, you can edit anything you like in there and your teacher can also see it and edit it. So essentially they can mark your work, you can do your work in that space. The collaboration space is a little bit more like sitting around a table um, and there being a sheet of paper in the middle that you all contribute to. So anybody in the class can um, do anything in that section at any time. Uh, the content library section is where there are um, things that your teacher will have put there that you can't edit. You can take your own copy if you like. So there may be a clean version of a worksheet or there may be a YouTube video linked there. You can have your own copy, but you can't edit it uh, in the content library. Um, and as you can see, those of you who are eagle-eyed, there is a teacher only section, but obviously you don't have access to that. One of the really important things to remember uh, about OneNote is that if you add a, um, a page here, and we'll call it studies. Now, immediately as I'm typing it, it's synchronizing. You don't have to hand in work if you're doing it on OneNote. You just do it and it's there and your teacher can see it. Your email inbox is a really important place at Stonyhurst. Things like Teams and Firefly will often send automated emails to your inbox to tell you what's happening there if you've been added to a team or you've had some studies set for you. So it's important to check in at the very least once per day. The way to find it is through Google Chrome and you'll probably have that on your desktop. If you don't, you can access it through um, the start button at the bottom left of the screen, just how we accessed Microsoft Teams. So double click on Google Chrome and probably there'll be a tab already set up with Microsoft Office for you. Um, if not, you just type in this bar here at the top, office.com. You don't need to bid after the question mark here, just office.com. And you'll see you have access to Word, Excel, PowerPoint. And then the fourth item down is O for Outlook. And that is where we access our emails. And I would like you all to do this um, uh, now. Um, with me. So if you need to pause, just let your tutor know. So once you've clicked on the over Outlook, you'll see if you've got any emails, perhaps you've read them, perhaps you haven't. Um, I've moved mine out of the way, so I don't uh, embarrass anybody by what they've written to me uh, this evening. Um, and um, uh, obviously you can reply to emails, forward emails, the usual sorts of things. If you want to contact one of your teachers, the standard format of the email address is their first initial and then a dot and then their surname. And you can see that it actually brought up a list of suggested teachers. So if you don't know their first initial, just start typing their surname. I'll use Mr. Allenson and it brings up um, a couple of suggestions there. Do remember, however, that your teachers don't in fact live on email and the majority of their time uh, they're spending with you guys talking to you or helping you with your work. Um, so email is not the um, primary uh, occupation of a teacher. So don't expect an immediate response and please don't overuse email. Um, if it can wait until the next lesson, then wait until the next lesson. If they've got a clinic that you can drop into, please wait until you drop into that clinic. Um, that's probably always the, the most efficient way of using your time and their time. Another one of the tabs in Google Chrome will probably have been set up to be automatically loading into Firefly for you. Um, it's not called Firefly, it's just called Login Stonyhurst College. Um, if you haven't got this, then the address is quite simple. It's stonyhurst.fireflycloud dot net. That's stonyhurst.fireflycloud.net. And once you get there, it will look really obvious that you need to put your um, username and password in here. Um, but actually, that would not be accurate at all. You just click staff and students here. Um, so the username and password is actually for your parents and not for you. So you can just click staff and students, and it should automatically log you in. So I've chosen a random rhetorician uh, to show you. So if you click on tasks, uh, it may be that your teachers have already set you something. Um, 
and uh, it'll give you an idea of how the uh, the system works. It's essentially your personal to-do list here. Um, back in the olden days, we used to make you write down your studies in a diary. You'd have to write them down in each lesson together with the, uh, the due dates and that sort of thing. Now it's all on Firefly for you. And if you want to um, see what you've done, you just log into Firefly. If you need to see what you've got to do tonight, you just log into Firefly. And if you want to just tick off that you've done, for example, your summer studies for Mr. Hoxer, you just tick the box next to the title of the piece of work, and then you would click mark one task as done, which I obviously uh, won't do now because that would be immensely frustrating for the person who uh, needs to hand it in. Uh, on Wednesday the 8th of September. Um, it also shows you if you're overdue. Um, so this particular bit of work was due in on Monday um, and was not um, uh, ticked off by then. Um, your work will actually be done in OneNote or on paper or however, however your teacher tells you to get it to them. But this is your um, way of finding out what that work is that they want you to do. Um, and it's the way of you keeping on top of your own routine to make absolutely certain you know what to do and when and how you're going to plan your time to make sure that all of your work is in uh, before or on the due date. So this is just a really a reminder that Mr. Hanley um, sent everybody an email on Thursday morning asking you to log into SOX. It gives you um, a link to a video where there are instructions on how to do that. Also, your tutors will have discussed it with you yesterday if you uh, did not sign up for everything you needed to by um, the end of Thursday. So just to um, recap what that is you need to have done. If you're on lower grammar or grammar, you need to have selected co-curricular options. If you're in syntax, you also need to have selected Thursday activities, and probably you've already attended those a couple of days ago. In higher line, in addition to co-curricular and Thursday, you also need to select your games options. Please let Mr. Hanley know if you've had any trouble with that. If you do have any issues with the technology that we've given to you, if it's a software issue and it's something to do with OneNote or SOX, talk to the member of staff that's responsible for that first of all. So in the case of SOX, for example, it would be Mr. Hanley because he's the assistant head co-curricular, or it might be um, that you need to see the appropriate head of games uh, to discuss the options and how they're working and whether they clash and so on. If it's to do with uh, a particular OneNote file or perhaps an online textbook, you should first of all talk to the subject teacher. If it's a case of the hardware not working, um, for example, um, there has been a little bit of damage to your, uh, to your laptop, uh, or perhaps there's something else uh, to do with the software that you don't quite understand why it's not accepting a password or so forth, then what you should do is email tech support, um, tech support at stonyhurst.ac.uk, um, and they'll get back to you as soon as they can about the issue. But of course, if there is a question that you can't answer, um, please do talk to your teachers, talk to me if, uh, if it would help, um, and we'll do our best to help you. This technology is designed to be there to make your learning a more fulfilling experience, not to make it harder. Um, so please do keep these, uh, these laptops safe, make sure you keep them in the bags. They're your responsibility to make sure you leave in sensible places at all times. Thank you very much for paying attention. I hope you're all set up now um, and uh, can enjoy the rest of the day knowing what you're doing with your devices. Uh, and I hope you have a wonderful first Saturday afternoon games. And I'll meet as many of you as possible, no doubt, over the coming days and weeks.